Good afternoon. We uh, ordered up, uh, we bought a couple of e-bikes, so we needed a rack to be able to carry the e-bikes on the back of the travel trailer. And we have a class, I guess you think class three hitch, uh, the two inch square tube. So we ordered up a Hollywood bike rack. It's the HR1700. Um, I think it's the 1500 and the 1700, I think are pretty close. I'm not sure a huge difference, but anyway, we ordered up the uh, 1700 uh, because you don't have to, on the step through bikes where it comes down to a V, you have to put a attachment across from the uh, seat post to your handlebars in order for that e-bike with the clamp that's got the v-shape on it to come down on it and so since our bikes even the step through was pretty low um, we went with this bike rack because you can adjust the attachment onto the rack um, without having to buy those cross members uh, anyway so i'm gonna flip the camera around and show you uh, what's on the floor and uh, comes with a lot of boxes all right so uh, those are all the boxes. This box over here is really light, so I think that one actually might be empty. It might be just a filler box, but I'll find out when I open it up. But you can see one, two, three, four, five boxes with, like I said, that six box I think is empty, and then a couple of the hitch parts. So uh, that's the rack, and over here I have the instruction booklet. And you can see it's the Hollywood Rack Easer Rider e-bike hitch 1700. And uh, yeah, the, again, the, the reason three. we went with this one is because it'll hold uh, an e-bike up to 80 pounds each. So um, we have two e-bikes. Both of our bikes weigh approximately 74 pounds. So we needed that. 80 pound per bike rack. Um, and this one is one of the few that are actually rated that high. So um, looks like it got good reviews. It seems pretty good, but uh, anyway, they said, oh, it's gonna take you two hours to put it together. So maybe we'll time me and see how it goes, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a video of putting this thing together uh, <laughs> part by part through the instructions. I went online to look for an assembly instruction video for it and um, I couldn't find any. So I saw how to basically put it on your vehicle. You know, that's not too tough, um, but there was no videos that I could find about actually putting the rack together. So I'm hoping to put a video together for that and hopefully it'll help people maybe not make mistakes. That's I'm sure I will make. look like when it's all put together. And it starts off with, uh, of course, your parts list. But it says to install it on the back of your vehicle, probably to hold it in place while you're bolting everything in. So um, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use my wife's pickup. She has it backed in right out there with the receiver hitch. And so I'm going to install it on the back of her truck. And so I'm going to start off with just going right through. They put look good pictures and everything um, and all the adjustments of putting everything together so we'll see how it goes here's all the parts laying right here so i'm going to take everything out and of the there's boxes. all the parts it's pretty cool it comes with a cable lock with four keys a lock to lock the hitch onto the vehicle and then locks for locking each individual bike onto the rack so they really go uh I don't, not really overboard but they definitely include all the locking so you can lock your cable around your bikes together you can lock the rack onto the hitch and then locking the bikes on individual so and the same key work for all locks and they give you four keys so and then they also give you all the tools to assemble it so we'll start off with the first step which is i believe that part right over there 
we put that on the vehicle into the receiver hitch and then you start bolting all the pieces together so we'll start off with uh, step one step two shows to take the locking pin and put that in and lock it into place I'm just gonna hand tighten that in and put the part over it just so we have it um, but I'm not going to tighten it down or lock it on yet because I'm just going to use this to install it. has this little everything. pin and you put that in a little circle down below here and I think that's what's going to allow the wrap to articulate so this off. This piece is going to go on here and it kind of has a little groove where it sits in on the hitch and then through the round hole. So when you put the bolt through there's a spacer that goes on, but you have to get the spacer to go recess inside the little round hole. And then you can put your washer and nut on. And then, like I said, they give you the wrenches. So you're gonna tighten this down, but we have one more bolt that goes it's through. It's one of the square head nuts. It's the longest one that came in the kit. And that'll go in there and then the washer lock washer and then the handle just like that so tighten everything down and they have locking nuts on them yep. all right so now we have the mass and the nut here in came with the same bag as with the gray knob, which is our next part. And it looks like it's universal. You can mount it either way. I'm sure they would like you to mount it so the Hollywood rack part in springs out back. Just like that. And it's a square nut. Of course, like I said, they give you the tools, tighten everything down. So we'll do that. And then the gray knob, they show coming from the back side. And again, this allows you to drop the mass down. So when you're putting the bike on the rack here, you can use it, then move the bike to the back raise the mass up and then this is where the arms will come that'll attach on so um kind of a neat idea because our electric bikes weigh 74 pounds each and so to get the one on the inside of the rack i'm going to have to kind of stair step it up onto the front of the rack and then lift it into the back raise up the mass and attach it rather than trying to bring the bike in through the back with this up already so I kind of like that design. So let me tighten these down and then we'll move on. Right, to the, the next, next is to give you a couple of square tubes that actually slide over here. Tells you the square holes to the top, the round holes to the bottom. And again, you want to put it on. I'm sure they'd like it so that it shows the Hollywood rack emblem out. So we'll put that one on that side. This one on this okay. side. Okay, so here's the bracket. It shows you come underneath and then it slides up on top. And then you got four bolts, all identical, that come with it. And each of these bolts just go in through the top. They're square nut, uh, square head. And we're going to tighten, we're going to tighten, put all four bolts in the square holes and then tighten them all down. And once we get that done, we'll be right back. So it comes with this little socket piece, which it, I, you got different, uh, the little kind of wrenches, but you also have a socket wrench that comes with it. And that works really well for some of the bolts that it actually fits on. And you can use it to tighten the rack up. So next we're gonna install where the tires are held 
we got the fat tire e-bike so that's why we got this rack also because it'll accommodate up to a, I think a five inch tire um, it comes with the strap that's going to actually hold the tire down. The, uh, the brackets are going to go on where this tightening knob goes to the top. So it's going to be like this. And actually, let me loosen that up. And so it'll slide on. Now the thing is, is this rack is going to be all the way that way. So what we'll want to do is install, the racks are offset. So this rack's going to be First, here, this one's and going this to be back. Back. So they're actually even, because if you install the two on the inside and install the two on the outside, they're going to be farther apart on the outside and close on the inside. You want them to be the even distance between these four racks on here, and I'll show you once I get them all installed. The other thing that happened is they come, and it seems like maybe the rack would go like this, but it actually goes here, so the knob is installed up. What happens is this little piece can turn. So when you put it on, you go, well, that doesn't lock in. What you have to do is just kind of pull it and wiggle it around, rotate it over, and then it'll zip tie right, kind of right in there. So that's how it should look when the rack goes on. So I'm gonna put the first rack on here, right there. And I got the other racks put together. So again, up, and just like that. And you can see the racks are a little bit offset. So again, we want to put this rack on this side on first. So, and the, the racks are different. So you can see these two racks, and these, there's like a right and a left. So again, we're going to install this rack first, and then we're going to install this rack second and again what you can see is they're offset this direction this one sticks out farther that way and so this one's in closer so this one needs to be out farther and again once you put them on and you get your bikes on you can adjust the racks in and out to get to the perfect distance of your bike what we'll have to do because our frames on our e-bikes are different lengths is we'll probably always put my bike on the inside and Sandra's bike on the outside and that way we know which way they go and the rack, the racks will be adjusted um, to where they should be for each of the bikes so I'm gonna leave these loose for now until we get the bikes up here we got a few more things to install and then All right, we'll this is goes. where the instructions get a little bit confusing um, so this assembly you have to take the carriage bolt all the way out. I put one on already so I could kind of get an idea. Now, I'm not sure when we'll use it or if we will be using it or not, but it comes with another carriage bolt and a longer extension and that actually fits right in there so it extends it out. Looks like probably an inch and a half, two inches is what it does. Makes it a little bit longer. Um, so. I'm not sure if that's something we're going to need. It said depending on your bikes, you may have to use the longer carriage bolt and spacer. So those might be extra you're not using. But this does present a little bit interesting to take it apart. So I'm going to take the knob off. And then there's a washer that comes off here. And just keep in mind this washer has a kind of a cone shape on one end. That needs to go in and then the bolt goes against the flat edge of the washer. And then you're going to take off the clamp. And then the carriage bolt will come all the way out. And that opens it up so that you can put this on here. I'm going to just So that carriage one. bolt goes through the clamp. We had all the stuff laying here and we spilt it all over the ground so I had to take a break. Uh, and your spacer goes on next. So far that's the easy part. Your clamp is going to go on next and this is going to be to the back side here. The clamps look pretty universal so you can put them on either way. In that washer the round cone part goes on first. And then to put the knob on, the hard part is the knob, it's got to go in quite a ways. 
So you got to get the carriage bolt lined up and then you have to press the clamp in to be able to get the, the bolt on or the uh, knob on. There we go. That right there will present a little challenge. And again, when you open it up, and this might be where we may need to have the longer ones, maybe to get around our frame or something, I'm not sure. But according to, if we got everything on here correct, our bike should go on here and this clamp, one way or another, uh, should clamp right onto the bike. And then they have a little Velcro uh, strap here. I'll take a look at that, but I, I think that just wraps around the bike to help hold everything in place. So we're almost there. I think I got just a couple little more parts that I got to figure out where they go. Um, but we're almost done. All right. It, it comes with, uh, 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 what, uh, what do they call it? A snug, it's a part that snugs it down so you don't get the flop on the uh, hitch when it's in the back of your vehicle or whatever hitch you have it. And because if you look, you can see it bounces around and your bikes are going to move around. And so what this part does is it keeps it from that slot bouncing up and down, which, you know, I guess it depends on if you're going a long ways or you're on a rough road or um, just don't want that thing bouncing around because, yeah, it gets annoying after a while. So it shows that this can go either... We might not have a choice. So you can either go this way. No. Nope. Or no. you can go on top down this way. So it would be on my Weiss truck. It would look like that. And I'm not sure where, because this is a, you put this on, this means you're going to leave this rack on. At least I would think your plan is to leave the rack on for quite a while. Um, it's got an extra hole in here, so you can use it, I believe. You could probably, um, they make it for another couple racks that they have, which you can go into a class two hitch. So on my Weiss truck here, we would have to go this direction with it, just like that. And then there's another nut and washer that you put on so it's a double uh double nut uh on it so it keeps it on tight you don't lose your nuts off the bottom of it but again i'm not going to put it on tight but with that on you can see there's no slop in it so again you can put these on this would have probably been nice to have the knobs on it so that you could just tighten it down and take it off in on and off real easy but again, now I don't have any of the hitch um, slop. If that was tightened down really nice, when we travel with our RV, where we put this on the back of our RV into the receiver hitch, we'll definitely be putting this on it to hold it on it because there won't be anything else going in place of it. So we will use this on our RV uh, when we use our RV travel trailer. And then um, there was a couple other screws <laughs> that came with it two little screws and it said for a uh, wheel, wheel lock and it says wheel stop screws and washers. We have no idea what they're for. Um, we went through the instructions. My wife went through the instructions a couple of times. I went through it a few times. We couldn't find any reason for these screws. So I'm thinking some of their kits um, are universal for other uh, other racks that they sell. So um, I'm not sure. If it comes with before. these two two of these little brackets, and they call them the small wheel. Uh, what do they call them? Small wheel brackets. Uh, actually, it doesn't even show it in the parts. Uh, it doesn't even show it in the parts. Oh yeah, there it is. Small wheel adapters, and what those are is you can put them on here. So if you have a bike that has, a, like maybe a kid's bike or one of those electric bikes that has the little tiny wheels on it and you don't want them to fall through the, the rack, <laughs> you I guess you can put this on and it shortens the rack up and keeps the tire from falling through versus this whole length here. 
We have 36 inch fat tires on our bike, so these are gonna be extra parts. So those extra screws and these extra parts and then the extra spacers, I'm not sure we'll be using them or not. I'll let you know if we come back and we end up having to use those other longer carry bolts on it. But we're gonna go get our e-bikes and we're gonna to try to put those things, our e-bikes on All right, right so now. We brought up right. our e-bikes. Uh, I removed the pin on the tilt because these things are able to tilt away from your vehicle. So if you have a hatchback or something and you want to be able to open the hatch, the, the whole rack tilts back. You have to pull this, uh, the knob, black knob one out. And then there's a pin that you pull out. There's a lock on it and you pull it out. And when you pull the pin, the rack rotates away from the vehicle. So trying to make sure I don't mess up my wife's vehicle the first time we do this. Um, I'm gonna drop it down and I'm gonna put the bike up on here and then I'll put the mask back up and with the, they call this part the mask that goes up between the bikes. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And I would like to see that if, you know, maybe Hollywood Rock could do this in the future is uh, I know they're going for beefy beefiness on this rack, which it is much beefier than I was expecting. But the way that you could do quick releases on these to be able to drop everything down. So I'm going to move these up here, up as far as I can, so they're out of the way for the bike. And we undid the straps. So no particular direction here on the bike. Uh, I just rode the bike up here this direction and uh, so we're going to see how well it works. Again, these bikes, they're not bad. Uh, they weigh in. Actually, you know, the, when I look at this, how I came in, um, I can tell you one thing is the racks are going to have to be a lot farther apart than I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen those out a little bit and then I'll have to probably do a final adjustment. So let me lengthen the brackets out about, oh, I'm going to say probably about another six inches. And then so right I decided to put the rack back up level with the vehicle and I'm going to put the bike up on here and up against the mast and kind of see the right adjustment for the racks for the tires. So I'm going to see if that'll work a little bit easier. I'm going to put the front tire in. Front's heavier than the back. First time using these racks, so <laughs> learning everything about it. And it looks like I need to have the racks a little farther up, probably another three inches total so I'm gonna go a little longer on this side there we go and I think what I'll do is measure them that's about right right there but I'm farther out on these racks than I am on those racks probably doesn't matter a lot but I'm going to measure and then take a little bit of the inches off this side and add it over to this side and then put the bike back up on here. So that looks really good. All right, All right. so took the bike off, found that the distance um, was a total of 13 inches. So we just divide in half and then move the brackets out, brackets out six and a half, measure both bikes frames. And I don't know if there's an exact science to this other than just putting the bike up on the rack and adjusting it. With the e-bikes, they're pretty heavy, so it's hard to adjust them while they're on the rack. Maybe two people could do it together. Anyway, we adjusted it. So now what I'm gonna do is, I know the bike is gonna fit on the back racks. So I'm gonna go back to dropping the weight down and dropping the, the mass down and lifting it up and sitting it on the back and then raising the mass up for it to lay against. So, we'll start off with removing this pin, dropping it down and I already have the mass loose. I didn't put the bracket back in and we'll see how this works. I don't know, 
Might be easier to have it up on top, uh, up straight, but we'll find out. So, I think putting the front tire in first is probably the easiest. So there's the first, and I'm going to go ahead and move the back right over. I have to make sure the brackets are out of the way. Whoops. I'm sure I'll get better at this. <laughs> it's probably a two person job. Yeah. And then the mask will come up, and then for my bike, it should come down and attach. Now, like that, I lift it up. Much the pedal. Pins in. It's on. Now it's just a matter of strapping it down. And then that locks in. So I guess a couple of things, you gotta make sure the brackets are out of the way. Um, the two people would make it a lot easier. So that's one bike. Well, and this is the other wife's bike. So again, I'm gonna put the front tire in the bracket first, and then the back. It's like that. And like my wife says, got to make sure the pedals are out of the way. And I can see where my wife's bike, I'm going to have to use the other bracket on the other side. And I'm going to probably have to put the extension on hers to get it down to clamp on her seat. All right, we got the bikes on the rack. Um, pretty amazing. There's a lot of adjustments on the racks. Um, what we ended up doing is because of the mass part in the middle and being able to, we wanted to be able to clamp it to our uh, seat posts on each one. And that way we're not clamping to the paint job on the bikes to scratch them up. So to do that, we had to take the tire rack off of the inside one and the outside one and flip them. And then what it did is it took the inside bike and moved it forward so we could attach it to the post. And then it moved the, uh, the outside one that way, which allowed us to attach it to the post. And we ended up using those longer extensions, um, mainly also too, because it actually moves the bikes apart a little bit. So they're not so, they're so not so tight. So it moves them apart. Um, so now everything's tightened down. We have the bikes on, the straps around the wheels on. And the only thing I may do um, is I may look at, they make light kits. And I may look at down here where I have room is possibly mounting a couple of trailer lights, just little ones, and then plugging them into the outlet. Of course, we won't have that on the RV, but the RV is a lot wider, so I think the lights um, will stick out. But uh, anyway, a lot of adjustments. You have adjustments on these up and down. They rotate. They rotate here. There's a longer extension for it. The racks down here extend both directions. So it just took us probably half hour of moving bikes on and off and adjusting to where we finally got everything adjusted correctly um, and, uh, and set. So now we got everything tightened down. We do find that tilting the rack down um, allows us to move the bikes a little bit more to uh, unload them from the, from the bike rack itself. So that tilt is really nice so that you don't lean the bike up against your vehicle and scratch it. However, um, if we position the bike peg uh, pedal on the inside, on this side of the mass when we load it, then we could just drop the mass and lift the bike right off. So. We're still working out all the kinks, but uh, 
hopefully this will help out there if you're putting a Hollywood rack on, on how to mount it onto your vehicle. And you can see that the bike, the rack actually kind of leans in. And so the bike actually leans a little bit. Um, but like I said, we like them leaning away from each other. They are incredibly st uh, sturdy. We never did tighten that part up down there that tightens. Um, just wanted to show you how to install that. Anyway, um, pretty beefy rack. I think this thing will work pretty well. All right. Hollywood Rack, 1700.